I'm joined remotely via Zoom by Emily Maximiuk, the Managing Director of the Children's Book Project, along with Board President uh, Risa Schwartz and Board Member Maureen McCarthy. Thanks for being here, Emily, Risa, and Maureen. Um, I'd like to start with Risa to just provide um, for the audience a little bit of history on why the Children's Book Project was created. Thank you. In 1992, the founder of the Children's Book Project, Vicki Pollack, who was a reading specialist, noticed that the children in her schools did not have books. They didn't have books in the classroom and they didn't have books at home. And she was very conversant with studies that show the more words a child hears and is read to, uh, the better they achieve in school and in life. And so she found a way to locate books without children and give them to children without books. And then clients came to the book site and selected them and hundreds of thousands of books uh, went out every year and it's been 28 years. Thank you. So um, Maureen, I wanna to turn to you and um, ask how has the COVID-19 epidemic impacted uh, the children's book project and your normal distribution of having educators come to your book site um, to self-select uh, books? Well, it's really been difficult because we would have people come three days a week and every first Saturday and come and pick out as many books as they, we would tell them, as many books as you can carry out, you can take. And so when we had to shut down, we had to be creative and we have an amazing, amazing book site manager and um, her assistant who went and picked up books from people that they could pick up books from and box them up and took them to shelters, took them to school sites, anywhere where there was children and families that needed books, they made themselves available. And I think that's what I miss the most is, is them coming in and getting the books. And so, uh, um, Emily, can you uh, talk a little bit about, so now that you guys have, you know, figured out a way to distribute books, could you talk a, a, about the out-of-school network and your community of partners and the sites that you've delivered books to? And what I found interesting um, on your website was it's not just San Francisco-based. Yeah. Um, thank you. And so as Maureen was talking, um, she mentioned that we've worked with all sorts of different forms of distributing out books to get kids who need them. Um, with kids being out of school, they're not having the same sort of access to reading rich environments. They don't have the books in home. And so because, we, because we're based in a decommissioned school building, we don't have it set up so that way kids come to get books from us typically. And so now we're relying on our educators to be the point people that we're bringing books to, and then they're distributing them out to the different kids. And so that's why we're working with a variety of organizations like SFUSD. We've gotten them 8,000 books to distribute out in their laptop distribution and distance learning packets to children in pre-K through second grade. We've been working with food banks and homeless shelters, different organizations that are serving our most vulnerable populations to ensure that they're making sure that the children that they serve have access to books. That's great. Um, so, Risa, you've been with the organization for decades. Um, I would love to have you share with the audience what do you feel like has been the biggest impact that um, the book project has made in our community over the years? Thanks. I, I have not actually been with the organization for decades, although some of our board members have. And interestingly enough, they've been involved in it as clients. So we have a physician with the Department of Public Health who's on the board, uh, and she was a client for over two decades. And then she hauled me into the project about six years ago when the landlord raised, uh, tripled the rent, and a group of us had a kitchen table meeting, and uh, someone said, I know someone at the San Francisco Unified School District maybe they'll give us a space. And so within the space of a few weeks, we threw a retirement party, got a, a space about five and a half years ago um, in this decommissioned school in the outer sunset. And from that time and, and before, in the 28 years of the project's history, we are on the cusp of giving away our three millionth book. And we know that when children have books at the homeless shelters who take them, 
when they have them in the schools and school libraries and classroom libraries, when teachers who have a low budget can afford to fill those classrooms, um, it makes an enormous difference. And we know that uh, because we get beautiful letters where my staff weeps from the children, but also from teachers. And the teachers tell us sometimes when they give children books, it's the first book in the home. And that speaks to the incredible economic disparity in our very wealthy city and the surrounding environs. Um, but when people have driven uh, hours from Tracy, Modesto, San Jose, uh, Turlock, uh, and they arrive about half an hour before we're closing, we let them in, they stay late, and they know to bring rolling suitcases, and they take away as many books, all free, all for the educators or the organizations serving kids or the children to keep and, and to own. And um, the, the site, uh, you know, one day after the pandemic, maybe you'll come to the site and see the beautiful cards from teachers and from children's saying, thank you, I love this book, and do you have another one about dinosaurs? Thank you, that was great. Mm -hmm. um, so Maureen, uh, could you share with the audience one of your favorite stories? Um, you've been with the organization a while as well, so teacher, child. I think the thing that, that happens over and over again is um, on Wednesdays and the first Saturday, I always am at the book site helping to do a variety of things. But one of my favorite things to do is help teachers and community people pick out books to take with them. And for people who come for the first time, they're like kids in a, in a toy store, like, wow. And, and I can, and they're free and, and I can, I can take as many as I want. And it's like the joy is just, they're just amazed that somebody is giving them something for their classroom. So many teachers come in and say, you know, I'm a new teacher. There were no books in my classroom when I got to my classroom and I can't afford to buy them. This is such a gift. Thank you so much. And so then it's really fun. Then we get to help them pick out books. What are you looking for? We have awesome volunteers, some retired teachers that say, okay, what grade level? Let me help you find the books. And to watch people walk out, just, wow, I got all these books. My kids are going to be so excited when, you know, school is, well, when school gets back in session. But the joy is just immeasurable. There's no crying in baseball, but maybe there's crying in children's literacy. I'll, I'll tell you another story that uh, Kathleen Weidler, our site manager, told me. You know, we get 150,000 or so books donated to us a year, and every single one of them has to be touched by our volunteers or staff to count them. And recently, uh, a teacher walked in and said there was a very withdrawn, troubled kid with an unusual name. And Kathleen went into the back room where she keeps special stuff for people if they have a special request or even if they just tell her a story, and there was a book with the child's name in the title, and the teacher burst into tears and said, this is going to change him. This is going to open him up and open the door. That's why what we do. It's a little bit of mother's milk, right? Thank you. Wonderful stories. Um, so Emily and uh, Risa, uh, how can people get involved? Um, what, what are the things that you guys need at this point? Okay, well, I'll take the first bit. Um, for our most immediate pressing need, we're still getting out about 12,000 books just since the shutdown. That's more than we typically get out in a month with our book site open. Um, and these books are going, again, to organizations that are serving kids. And so just like the stories that Maureen and Risa mentioned, it's these tiny moments that we're reaching kids and helping them learn and discover and become better versions of themselves, not just for literacy attainment, but also as they build character. Um, and so that's one of the reasons we need books right now is most of the time we're dependent on book drives from Girl Scouts and Eagle Scouts. Um, there are bins all across the city where people donate their gently loved, slightly, you know, gently used, well-loved books 
for us to then take in and organize and sort. Um, and we're not getting those books in right now, but we're still getting those books out. So we are in desperate need of picture books, early readers, and books in Spanish in particular, because we need to have books in the languages that we're serving. Um, we also really need books that have inclusive themes and diverse characters to represent the children that are reading them. Um, we have a wish list curated now on bookshop.org, which is for independent bookstores and shares proceeds. Um, and you have the links for that. And, um, but in, beyond that, we also just need funds in general for longer term goals. And I'll let Risa speak to that. Okay. So our, our two biggest needs are a new space and funding um, to run the project and for books. And the space issue is paramount. Um, the school district about five and a half years ago gave us a free space in this decommissioned school, but it's being uh, torn down uh, for a much needed affordable housing uh, for educators and teachers project. So we have no space after February, 2021, and we have met several times with the school district, but right now they don't have anything in mind for us. So we have a 28 year old project where we receive normally 150,000 books donated to us, the books without children, without even having to strain to get those books because people know of us. We're sort of a San Francisco Bay Area institution. If they can uh, find us a space, we need 2,000 square feet at a minimum. Um, we also need to increase our pool of funders. There's a whole world of foundations out there that are opaque, meaning grant applications by invitation only. If there are people out there who know of foundations and can contact them and have them introduce us to those foundations so that we can apply. And those are our needs. And also uh, go to our website or our GoFundMe um, and you can donate modest sums if you don't know of foundations to refer us to or sites to give us. And that's basically what we need. Well, I want to thank, um, thank you, Emily and um, Risa and Maureen for sharing, um, you know, all about the Children's Book Project and your work today. Uh, we'll make sure that, that the viewers have your contact information, website, social media, so people can follow the, the uh, Children's Book Project and get engaged and uh, please stay safe and healthy out there um, as we all work our way through this new normal. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.